Hi, Jason Eric here from CPR St. Louis, and congratulations on gaining access to the Cardiopulmonary Review. In this review, we'll be covering the anatomy of the heart, the anatomy of the respiratory system, and blood flow through the heart and lungs. So first of all, with the anatomy of the heart, there are four chambers, the right atrium and the left atrium, which are the top two chambers or the superior most chambers, and then a right ventricle and a left ventricle. And these two chambers are the bottom chambers. And in between the atrium ventricles, there are valves. On the left side, there's the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve. And on the right side, there's the tricuspid valve. You can remember that the tricuspid is on the right because it has an R in it for right. And then at the beginning of the aorta, which is one of the great vessels associated with the heart, is the aortic valve. And then at the beginning of the pulmonary arteries or pulmonary trunk, there's the pulmonic valve. The four great vessels, which I was alluding to earlier, are the aorta, the pulmonary veins, the pulmonary arteries, and the inferior and superior vena cavae. Let's take a look on a diagram here of where all of these parts are located. So you could see here that here's the right atrium, which is a chamber, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. And so the blood comes in through the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava into the right atrium, flows down through. Now this valve here is on the right side, so it's the tricuspid valve. So blood flows through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle and then up through the pulmonic valve into the pulmonary trunk, which leads to pulmonary arteries, which takes the blood out to the lungs. So because this blood in the pulmonary arteries is going to the lungs, it's relatively low in oxygen and high in CO2, which is the reason it's going to the lungs to the first place, that is to become oxygenated and to get rid of the carbon dioxide. So it goes out to the lungs and you get gas exchange and then that blood comes back to the heart through the pulmonary veins. And so we have the pulmonary veins bring oxygenated blood back to the left atrium, down through the bicuspid or mitral valve into the left ventricle and the left ventricle contracts and blood goes up through the aortic valve up through the aorta. Now from the aorta, blood is gonna go up to the head, down to the arms, down the descending aorta, and eventually to the rest of the body. So the reality of how this works is blood actually comes into the right atrium and left atrium at the same time and then flows down through to the ventricles at the same time. The ventricles actually contract together forcing blood up into the pulmonary arteries and then also into the aorta at the same time. So the way the heart functions is the atria always contract and relax and then the ventricles contract and relax and that completes one cardiac cycle. That is once again, the atria contract and relax and then the ventricles contract and relax. Now for the respiratory system, the respiratory system, the organs include the nasal cavity, the pharynx, the larynx, the trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, alveoli, which are the air sacs where gas exchange occurs, and then the lungs. And note that the right lung is the larger lung. It actually has three lobes, whereas the left lung is a smaller lung. It only has two lobes, and that's because it's occluded by the heart. The heart is on the left side. So if we take a look at those uh, organs, you'll see that this we're looking at is a uh, mid-sagittal view of the head. And so here's the nose and air will come in through the nose. Here's the nasal cavity. It'll come down through the nasal cavity to the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, which is just really the back of your throat because this is your tongue and teeth. So if you looked in the back of your mouth, you'd be looking at your oropharynx and then down through the laryngopharynx and into the larynx. Now the larynx is also known as your voice box. From the larynx, the air then would go down through the trachea and then branch into right and left primary bronchi and then further branch into secondary and tertiary bronchi and continue to branch and branch and branch until you become, until the airways become bronchioles and then eventually those bronchioles are gonna open up into alveolar ducts and terminate in air sacs called alveoli. And it's at the alveoli where gas exchange actually occurs. 
This is a diagram that really illustrates. It's a simple diagram, but it's a diagram I use when I teach an overview of the um, how the heart pumps blood to the lungs and to the body. So once again, what we have here is the right atria and the left atria. So like I said before, the atria are the chambers at the top. The ventricles are the chambers at the bottom. So you have the right ventricle and the left ventricle. So let's start with the left ventricle. Left ventricle will contract and blood will go out through the aorta. This would represent the aorta. And this is arterial blood. Arterial means blood in the arteries. And notice that it's relatively high in oxygen and low in carbon dioxide. This is the blood pumped by the left ventricle that goes to the body. So the left ventricular wall is always going to be the thickest uh, wall. The muscle is always going to be thickest because the left ventricle's job is to pump blood to the entire body. So blood is going to go out to the entire body, to all your tissues and organs, where there's going to be gas exchange. So the oxygen goes from the blood to the tissue, and the carbon dioxide goes from the tissue to the blood. So then the vessels that drain your tissues and organs are veins, and this is known as venous blood. Now, by definition, a vein takes blood back to the heart, whereas over here we know that this is an artery because it takes blood away from the heart. So arteries take blood away from the heart, veins take blood to the heart. So the veins take blood back to the heart. This is known as venous blood. And notice it would be relatively low in oxygen and high in CO2 uh, coming from the tissue because we had oxygenated blood going to the tissue, but then the oxygen went to the tissue, to the cells. And so the blood leaving is going to have less oxygen. Well, that's why it needs to go back to the heart because the right side of the heart is then going to pump that blood to the lungs through pulmonary arteries. Now pulmonary means lung and artery once again remember is taking blood away from the heart. So the pulmonary arteries take blood away from the heart and to the lungs. Now this blood once again is going to be relatively low in oxygen because it came from up here. Low oxygen, low oxygen, low oxygen. It just goes through the right side of the heart which just acts as a pump and then pumps it out to the lungs. Now once the blood gets into the lungs, there's going to be gas exchange again. So the carbon dioxide from the blood is going to go to the lung, which you will eventually exhale, and then the oxygen is going to go from the lung into the blood. So the vessels leaving the lungs are known as pulmonary veins. Notice the pulmonary veins are relatively high in oxygen and low in carbon dioxide because they just came from it just came from the lungs. So then that blood goes back to the left side, which is the left atrium, passes through to the left ventricle, and then once again, the left ventricle contracts and pumps that oxygenated blood out to the body, and it happens over and over again. Now, if we were going to put valves on here, there would be, right here would be the tricuspid valve, and then over here would be the bicuspid or mitral valve. Right here, coming out of left ventricle, separating left ventricle and the aorta, would be the aortic valve. And then right here coming out of the right ventricle would be the pulmonic valve. So you have your four chambers, your four valves, and your great vessels. And this is the way that blood flows through the heart, to the lungs, out to the body, and back.